Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of 914s for Newbies. In this video, we'll change the gear oil on a stock 901 transaxle and tackle one of the most common leaky spots on the Porsche 914 and other cars which use the 901, the speedometer drive gear. Let's get started. To change the gear oil, you'll need a 17 millimeter hex socket, a pan that can hold at least three quarts of oil, two and a half quarts of new gear oil, about four feet of half inch inside diameter tubing, a funnel, and maybe one of these for your nose. Gear oil smells nasty. If you're fixing the speedometer drive gear, you'll also need a 13 millimeter socket and a vice grip or a 26 millimeter wrench if you have one, but that will probably be the only use you'll ever have for it, so I just use the vice grip. Now there are a few reasons why the speedometer drive gear leaks. In the original design, the single O-ring sits pretty high up in the bore, and that, combined with movement and vibration over time, degrades the O-ring and the inner seal, which allows gear oil to seep past. You can either refurbish the factory drive gear with a new O-ring and seal, or you can upgrade to an improved design, which has two O-rings, like this one from 914 Rubber that I'm installing today. Now, while you can change the speedometer drive without dumping the gear oil by raising the rear of the car, I think it's way better and safer to just drain the case. It's probably overdue anyway, and that's what we're gonna do today. Here on the right side of the transaxle, you'll see the drain and fill plugs. I'm using some brake cleaner and towels to get any gunk out of the plugs so the hex bit can fully seat. You don't wanna strip these. Use the 17 millimeter hex on a wrench or breaker bar and open the top plug first. That's the fill, because it would really suck to drain the case and then discover that you can't fill it back up. Put the pan underneath and open the drain plug. Just try not to get any of that nastiness on you. I think it smells like a mix of mackerel and an amusement park ride, but maybe you like that. The drain plug has a small magnet built into it, and it's totally normal to see some metal slivers on it. The magnet's there to catch those slivers, and it does not give them up easily. You're probably gonna fight a bit to get that plug clean. Okay, now that the case is drained, let's pull out the speedometer drive gear. First, I'm gonna loosen the speedo cable and then do the coupler, which holds the angled part. It's way easier to break that coupler free with the unit still secured in the car. The housing is made of aluminum, so you don't wanna take a chance on damaging it in a vise. Once the coupler is loose and the cable is detached, remove the retaining bolt with a 13 millimeter socket. It's a special bolt that locks the gear housing and keeps it from turning. And now you can pull the whole unit out. You may need to rock or spin it a bit, but it will eventually come free. Now find a clean spot to disassemble the unit so you can either replace the seals or transfer parts to the new housing. Here we have the drive gear and this angled part is what we're gonna be reusing. And you can see why I loosened this coupler while it was on the car. And here's the washer that we'll need to keep. And the gear just pulls straight out of the top. Okay, now that we have the units apart, you can see the differences. The one on the left is the OEM, and it has a single O-ring. And uh, the one on the right is the 914 rubber unit with the secondary O-ring. Now there's also a seal in the bottom that can wear out and it keeps fluid out. So you'll need to make sure that it's clean and replaced. Now for reassembly, what we're gonna do is take the drive gear and first put that in through the top. It just snaps in and make sure it spins freely. Still got some gear oil on it, which helps. And you can see that the side is through. And now what we're gonna do is take the sealing washer and drop that in. Next, we'll grab the uh, angled part. I've already cleaned the mating surface of that. And then we make sure that the slot lines up and put it in and get the coupler started at least. We wanna get it to uh, just hand tight until we get it on the car. And now you can see that it actually works. Turn the gear and the cable part also turns. And now we'll take some gear oil and just lube up the O-rings, which will make it easier to get the unit into the car. Now, as you put it in, take notice of this divot and the divot needs to align 
with the bolt, the special bolt that locks it in the car through that hole right there. So what we'll do is we'll orient it in a way so that as we push it into the car, it's aligned with the hole. You have to wiggle it a bit, but it does hit home. And now we'll take this special bolt and start to get it threaded through the hole. Now, if the bolt doesn't go all the way in, don't force it. It probably means the divot isn't lined up. So just rotate the drive a bit until it fits and then tighten the bolt. 18 foot pounds is about right. And now what we'll do is get the coupler tightened. And what you wanna make sure is as you're tightening, uh, the angle piece should be pointed in the right direction. Now that the coupler is good and tight, all we have to do is get the speedo cable reattached. So we'll get it started here and then just uh, tighten it a bit. It doesn't have to be too tight at all. Now that the speedometer gear drive is in, let's replace the drain plug and fill the case. So I'll make sure this is nice and clean. As you can see, I won my fight with the magnet, so it's clean now and I'll just put a little anti-seize on it to make it easier to remove next time and then put it back in the case. It should go in pretty easy. You definitely do not want to cross thread. Torque spec is 13 to 17 foot pounds. Now, I have a pretty good feel for that range, so I'm not using a torque wrench. Now there are a lot of opinions about which gear oil is best, but I follow Dr. Evil's recommendation. He's probably the best rebuilder of 901 transmissions out there. And he likes good old 90 weight dinosaur oil. Nothing fancy and no synthetics. Just make sure it's GL5 rated. You don't want any slip additives either. Sometimes the simplest and cheapest stuff is best. And that doesn't happen often with Porsches, so take advantage when you can. Because the fill hole is totally vertical and there isn't much space above it, you can't easily fit a bottle or a funnel up there. I've tried lots of methods, but I think the easiest is to get about four feet of half inch inside diameter tubing, and wedge a funnel into one end, and put the other end into the case. I use a clamp on the muffler to hold a little bend on the hose to keep it from popping out. Then open all three bottles of oil so they're ready to go beside you, and you don't have to put the funnel down and get gear oil all over the floor. Ask me how I know. Slowly pour in the new gear oil, beer bong style. It'll take a minute, it's thick stuff. Put two and a half quarts in and then check the level with your finger. It should be pretty close to the bottom edge of the fill hole or just weeping out, and that's what you want. Hopefully the pan is still under it. Put a little anti-seize on the plug and then tighten that to about 14 foot-pounds as well. And that's it, you're done for another 10,000 miles or so and you've stopped the nastiest smelling drips on your garage floor. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching, be safe, and enjoy the addiction.